With the complete phase out of R410A already underway, the industry is already looking for new alternatives. These alternatives are required by the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol to start using a refrigerant that not only has no ozone depleting potential, but significantly lower global warming potential. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. See, R22 refrigerant is a chlorodifluoromethane that has ozone depleting potential. Chlorine is released with R22 when it escapes a refrigerant system. It's been proven several times over that Freon escaping into the air gets lifted into the stratosphere with updrafts that carry them up there. Once high enough, the Freon bond breaks down when UV rays from the sun hit them, where the chlorine is then released from its bond where it lingers in the ozone layer for years. The California Air Resource Board says that releasing one 30-pound jug of R22 is more potent, if released, than the CO2 emitted to the air by driving nearly seven more fossil fuel powered cars each year. Not only that, but its global warming potential is 1810. That means R22 released into the air has 1800 times more potency than the same amount of carbon dioxide. And just as a reminder, we all know that CO2 is a once naturally occurring greenhouse gas that has significantly increased since the late 1700s with the start of the Industrial Revolution. Humans and their machines have elevated the once balanced levels of CO2 to almost twice what it was. So what once was a normal amount of CO2 in our atmosphere that was actually helpful by trapping heat in our atmosphere has now gone way beyond the normal levels contributing to an abnormal rate of global warming. As for our 410A refrigerant, while it has no ozone depleting potential, it does have a significant amount of global warming potential. Would you be surprised to know that its GWP is even higher than R22's at a little over 2000? This has led to the Kigali mandating the HVAC industry elevated standards for the refrigerant usage in residential and commercial systems. Further, the state of California has passed legislation requiring the phase out of what most of us thought to be environmentally friendly refrigerants like R410A, R134, etc. by the year 2023. And if HVAC manufacturers have to change the refrigerants to satisfy the state of California, they likely will have to change the refrigerants in all of the equipment that they sell throughout the United States and elsewhere, since it makes no sense for these companies to manufacture two different types of equipment lines. So what refrigerants would we move on to? Well, they're already being used in HVAC applications today. Actually, since 2012, R32 is a refrigerant that Daikin has been using as its non-ozone depleting refrigerant with very low GWP. Carrier also has one called R454B. The other name for that is strangely familiar to all of us, making it sound nice and easy to switch over to. It's pure on advanced. Carrier has already declared that by 2023, all of their ducted air conditioning products in North America will be manufactured with this product. Now, most of us who have been following the phase out of R410A are concerned about the composition of these refrigerants though. These refrigerants are listed as A2L, which puts them in the category of mildly flammable. Mildly flammable as opposed to what? R22 and R410A are considered to have low flammability levels and are listed as A1. A and B are the toxicity levels of the refrigerant, A being lower than B, while 1, 2, and 3 are the flammability ratings with 1 being the lowest and 3 being the highest. According to an article written for the Department of Energy Technology, Pavel Maknach, if I said that right, described a comparison as to what mildly flammable means. He said to be deemed mildly flammable, a substance must burn at a velocity of no greater than 10 square meters per second. By comparison, Usain Bolt's world record 100 meter time equates to 1,043 square meters per second, while hydrocarbons burn many times faster. R32 is described as having a lower flammability rating than ammonia, which is already known for being a difficult substance to ignite. 
That makes me feel all warm and cozy. But when ACHR News and Indoor Comfort News started releasing stories about the dangers that could arise when switching over to an A2L refrigerant, it made my ears perk up. One article I read said the recovery machines that we technicians will need to switch to will have some requirement to vacate the fumes that could accumulate near these machines. Machines that have little source of ignition, like something as little as a spark. Now, I realize I don't fully understand the mechanical breakdown of a recovery machine or a vacuum pump, but I do realize that they need electricity to run. The article I read said most common recovery machines won't be suitable for A2L refrigerants. Another concern of mine, and many others, is mildly flammable still means more flammable than non-flammable. The International Code Council recently met and discussed routine changes to the upcoming code. These changes rarely make as big of an impact on the community as this topic does. Usually they just change some wording for new technologies that are emerging. But Jay Peters for Indoor Comfort News wrote that seldom does a standard update change the level of safety for a particular product like the ones using flammable refrigerants. He's concerned that the administration of the Code Council doesn't really debate the technical aspects of the updated standard. Peters said, the flammable refrigerants issue has become a very big subject of debate in the codes covering HVAC and fire safety nationwide, saying many proposals to add these refrigerants to direct in-home systems were all rejected because of safety concerns and incomplete research. The companies trying to get this refrigerant pushed through to the International Code Council via the fire code, mechanical code, and the residential code say they're up against a deadline to get this new refrigerant mainstream. Well, no government agency is pushing them. No protocols are mandating this particular refrigerant be used by a certain time. It's the companies themselves that are saying it. These companies should be looking out for the real people who are going to be out in the field using it every day, as well as those protecting us from it. HVAC mechanics and firefighters should be protected and fully trained to be prepared how to handle and fight against a potential fire breakout. In order for this to happen, the International Fire Code the International Mechanical Code, as well as the Uniform Mechanical Code, would need complete information to adopt the wording required for mildly flammable refrigerants. If this is allowed too early and the information is not complete, Peters asks, what will stop others from timing their standards the same way that has been done here, circumventing all technical and safety debate of the industry and the membership of the ICC? This sets a very bad precedent, raises safety concerns, and conflicts with the votes of the International Mechanical Code, Uniform Mechanical Code, and International Fire Code. Jay Peters also directly pleads to the ICC membership that the committee must be overturned so that flammable refrigerants will not be allowed in homes without a single technical or safety provision in place to ensure public safety. My main concern when I heard all of this wasn't that I was so much worried about our own technicians. I can train them. I'm worried about side job Bob, who gets out to his first mildly flammable refrigerant call and really injures himself or causes major damage to the home that he's working on. Now, side job Bob sure does take a lot of business away from me, but I wouldn't even wish that on my worst enemy. One refrigerant that does meet current non-flammable refrigerant ratings is Honeywell's Solstice N41. It's called R466A and has no ozone depleting potential and very low GWP, 65% less than R410A. Honeywell has partnered with Midia, China's leading home appliance maker, to replace 410A with Solstice N41 in HVAC applications. Honeywell has answered the mandate by the Kigali Amendment to produce a low GWP refrigerant and it's non-flammable, which makes it safer for everyone. I personally feel that the reason why it's running in third place right now as the replacement for 410A is the cost to produce it. Apparently R32 is cheaper to make than Honeywell's R466A, which is a blend and therefore it costs more money to make. Shutting out Solstice N41 just puts more money in the pockets of the big guys. Could big companies like Daikin and Carrier be willing to put people in the way of danger to merely pad their own pockets even more? To me, it seems like the pressures that they are putting on themselves to get this refrigerant out too quickly is one, to beat everyone else to the punch, and two,
to be the one that gets the money and the recognition for it. Daikin, Carrier, and Honeywell all admit that this refrigerant update is only a medium term solution to the problem. Other refrigerants will be next as the drive to bring global warming potential to seemingly never ending lows moves on. Believe it or not, Daikin is already looking to replace their own R32 with a newer, lower GWP product. If that doesn't chap your hide, I don't know what will. Because we just started with the R410A phase out, and if R32 is truly our next refrigerant to be used, it's already on its way out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Who pays the price the most? Is it the technicians in the field, the HVAC company owners, or the end user, the homeowner, who loses out the most with the potential of having to use an HVAC system that has flammable refrigerant? There are more important things in life than money. There are lives at stake here, and I just hope that the authorities get this one right. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right, and if you click the little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air, and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.